Hey everybody, welcome Hello. back to Sunday Tea Book episode 18. 18. Holy cow, and we're coming to the end of the green tea section, which is a little mm -hmm. bit sad, but what's up next is dark tea, so it's going to be awesome. Welcome back, everybody. So, my t-shirt so, is crooked. I see Jan and Igor, Bruna, all welcome back. Good to see you guys. Oh, Jan is drinking some uh, Jenshang Xiao Zheng Zhong. Mm, yeah. Smoked, smoked. Mm, very nice. Very nice. It's a little bit more in the evening where you are, so that sounds mm. like an excellent evening tea. All right. So, on and that... We were just finished the lye roasted TGY session. Oh, that's nice. Who finished that? Igor. Oh, nice. Nice. Very cool. All right. And uh, what's up for us today mm -hmm. as we finish green tea? We are gonna... Let me show you guys. Okay, there's uh, my... So Instagram, More fancy ones. Instagram is just gonna see Instagram, my hands. You get so just the, the manual show. Right. So we've got a Real lovely Guju Zisun, which we'll be talking about today. Mm -hmm. Not a coincidence, guys. Not a coincidence. Yes. It's a fantastic tea. One of my favorite uh, green tea. Yes, uh, it's one of mine too. So um, I'll give you a little rundown for those of you that are new. What is Sunday Tea Book all about? This is a time, I'll still let the YouTube guys take a look at the leaf because I did a nice long montage. So, yeah. um, even helicopters, bear, yes, yes, a little bit of rotation. There. Rotation, I that's did right. it all. <laughs> so, what we do on Sunday Tea Book, guys, it was an idea that came from, from you guys out there in the audience, and we love it. Um, and the more I've done it, actually, the more I fall in love with this event, this, this phenomenon, whatever you want to call it. We mm -hmm. take books, articles, and papers that are hard to access but packed with great information. Hard to access because they're written in Chinese or they're translated poorly. And what we do is we translate them live here with you. Mm -hmm. Why we do that? You might think, oh my gosh, you're gonna translate live? Why don't you just translate it and give it to me? Don't worry, we do have a finished translation. The link is down below. Sorry about the earthquake Instagram. The link is down below in the uh, YouTube description. Um, Instagram, if you get the feeling you should head over to YouTube, you're absolutely right. Um, we have a finished translation, but as we go through the uh, various twists and turns of translating, over the last five years, I've learned so much doing that on a sort of day-to-day -day basis with Jen. We thought sharing that with you would be awesome. So um, that is what we're doing, guys. That is exactly what Sunday Tea Book is all about. So as we go through, the guys who are watching live, chip in with your comments in the chat. If you're watching this after the fact, please leave comments and questions down below. Every question that you guys ask helps everybody, including us often, mm. with words. Help us out with words if we're stuck. They all help everybody else out because maybe other people see things more from your perspective. Don't hesitate. Don't be shy. Ask us anything. Absolutely. I'm just going to... We're just getting our uh, we're going tea ready, and today again simplified uh, green tea brew method, just using grandpa a glass style. Pot. Beautiful. Yeah, that's yours. Very. Cool. I put a little bit extra leaf in here, so that's why I care about which one is which because uh, he talks more. That's why I got a little awesome. Bit Thank extra. you. Thank <laughs> you. So Alan C Keen on Instagram. Hello, mm. welcome. I'm not sure if you caught my intro. Right. Uh, so um, mm. today we're continuing on the book written by my mom, Jenny Wu, and it's called the China Tea. This book has uh, the, which my mom did the original, the uh, Chinese version, and uh, there's a translation side by side as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, but the translation isn't as good. Uh, it's kind of uh, hard for English first language mm. people to fully understand. Uh, that's why we're doing this. The good thing about this book is a great introduction book for Chinese tea oh, yeah. from the Chinese perspective. It's perfect. Right. And it helps us with you guys to build a common ground where mm -hmm. we agree on some, how do we want to express the terms. As you know, uh, you probably go to different tea stores and everybody have their own way of calling different things. That's right. So uh, we can talk about why it's translated like that mm -hmm. or why it's known like some common terms or is that uh, translated right or mm -hmm. at least we can get something uh, you know, that we all agree on and see what we want to proceed yep. in the future. When get all we... our stuff baseline, get us on the same page, so Absolutely. to speak, kind of literally and metaphorically. Yes. And the tea we're going to talk about today is Gu Zhu Zi Sun, green tea, four green tea, Lao Zhu Da Fang Jin Shan Cha, and Anji Bai Cha. Yummy. 
<laughs> so the way we're going to do it, the, like Jen said, we're going to, the way we're going to approach is it, I'm going to bring that right up on the screen, the book. We're not going to hold it up. We just do that to show you guys quickly and show you guys on Instagram. But if you're on Instagram, head on over to YouTube. We're going to pull the book right up on the screen and we'll become little in the corner. And I'm going to read through a section as it's written. And then I'm going to give you my impression about it, what, what I found hard to understand, what I understood from it. And then Jen's going to make sure we kind of find, mm, I think this is, there's more than this, but about three different things happen. I either miss something completely because it just wasn't translated. Uh, I misunderstand something because it was translated poorly. Or the worst scenario is I think I fully understood mm. and it was translated poorly and I completely miss the actual point that actually happens yeah, every now and then yeah. and so it's really this is where the secret is in being with us during this process because you'll see how these where these traps exist okay guys we have some really funny translation sessions coming up. yeah we got a few good ones so guys on instagram i'm gonna say goodbye we're gonna head on over to the youtube fully mm -hmm. guys on youtube this is your chance to click that subscribe button and bye bye instagram and um <laughs> I always like to say bye to those yeah. guys. I like to see uh, people started without we asking. They started to see, uh, tell us what they're drinking. It's actually really fun to see. Uh, yes, I love that. That's really great, right. guys. Uh, hey, Cindy, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Are you sipping anything? Um, Fernanda, for men, for Manda, for Manda, sorry. Uh, oh, drinking good one. some Hunan Jinghua. M A I, my. 2015. What is my? May, May. May. It's May in French. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Oh, cool. Nice. We're heading into um, dark tea next week. I'm yes, pretty next excited. week. I'm super excited about we that have, as well. I want to show you how much we've been through. So after today, yes, we're, we're like, making serious progress, you know, guys. Half of the book. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, I can't I'm really imagine excited about that, that we stick to this series for so long. Yes, like it is really. 18 really like fun four months huh a little bit over four months yeah whoa okay all right so um what i'm going to do now guys is we'll head over to the book we've got some uh keep it keep letting us know what you're drinking if you've got some tea mm -hmm. on it's never too late mm -hmm. for that but i am going to bring up the the book <sighs> and we'll head straight in to the next section this is really yummy tea i'm going to ask actually i'm heading down to the table of contents here so there's china tea the book by Jen's mom, Jen Li Wu. And we have made it all the way through all of these sections. So here's the section we're in now. I'm trying to use my left hand a bit to be more efficient, but we're in the green tea section. Whoops. And we've gone through all of these teas here. So I just wanted to ask you guys, because because we're closing <laughs> off this section today, is do you have in the green tea section um, a favorite here? For me, I had to think about it a bit, and I admit I'm kind of ambushing you by because I always hate that question when people spring it on me. Hey, what's your it's favorite hard. tea? It's, it's really, really hard because there's so many good ones. But I think my favorite is a little bit, I, I hate to say it, it's a bit boring, but I think my favorite is still Dragon Well, si, especially Si Hu Rong Jin, but not necessarily restricted to. I just love that tea, but there's a whole bunch <laughs> I really like a lot. Bilo Chun, Yuan Gua Pian is up there. Uh, and of course, what we're drinking today is one of my favorites, Guju Zisun and Jibai Cha. I know that at this point, it's hardly a favorite, right? But I really want to go back and I really like Taiping Ho Kui. I want to circle back. We had a Taiping Ho Kui back in 2016, I think it was. Maybe 17, maybe 15. Okay, guys, don't hold me to the date. <laughs> But uh, we, ha we wrote a blog post about a fellow mm -hmm. that Jan Lee ran into on her tea travels. His name was Mr. Ding, mm -hmm. if my memory serves. And he made two teas for us that year. A Taiping Ho Kui that was shockingly Phenomenal. beautiful. We I, posted, think we I found, found the picture, picture and, and I posted on it on Instagram, Instagram right? Yeah. So was, go troll our Instagram if you want to see the most beautiful and perfect Taiping Ho Kui leaf that you probably will ever see. Unless we can get in touch with him again and get some more. Because that was... Well, here is the thing. It's not that people do that every year because there's a lot of time to have right. the pinnacle thing. He has to be on side. At the right moment, right? Yes. Right. So that's, that's why... That's how technical these things that's are. That's why you, a, hmm. some of our uh, 
Actually, some of our sprinties are not always available. Once it's yeah. out of stock, we don't just always keep that in stock yeah. next year. It's it, it, uh, there's no guarantee, right? The yeah. season has to be right. The yeah, right season person. has to be. People has to have enough time to be there, and uh, if not, uh, the, our the right trusted, people have to be there. Uh, masters, uh, we have to be on site, and uh, mm. you know, very tricky. But mm. anyway, I hope someday I can circle back. He also made Huoshan Huang, Huoshan Huang, Huang, Huang which was also. Um, mm -hmm. whew, a yellow tea to blow. Can check that on our blog. I think. Uh, yeah, we'll, blog I'll put it in the description that. if it's not already there, guys. Yes. Okay, so let us know your favorite green tea from the list or not from the list. You know we're not so strict. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't. We won't kick you off if you answer <laughs> off the list. Um, so here we go. Today we're going to start out with uh, Jingshan tea, Jingshan mm -hmm. cha, and. I don't know, away we go. Let me scroll down a bit so yes. I'm not blocking. Just want to uh, remind you, uh, don't forget to go to the uh, the link in the description bar, uh, description box. There is the link to the website where the finished uh, mm. uh, translation is. Strongly it, recommended. And it might be easier for you to understand if you want to, you know, look at them yeah. side by side. You can follow along. So the way, and maybe just to give them a little insight into how we do that, because we do have mm. the finished translation up, is. Before we do the translation, obviously she does the translation, I, and then I get involved to help with the uh, final version of it. But before she grammar does that, grammar check. Grammar check. So before <laughs> she does that, I go through the. Uh, and by the way, if there's a grammar mistake, let me know in the comments of that page so that I can fix that because I'm not perfect. But before I do the translation, I go through and read it cold, just the English. Mm. That so I just want you to know, and I also try to put on my. If I didn't know anything about tea hat. But I might not be that, that good at wearing the hat, so that's where you guys are going to pipe in and give me a hand, all right? So here we roll. Jingshan cha, Jingshan tea. Jingshan tea is also called Jingshan fragrance tea. Is a kind of famous historical tea. The picking technique is particular, and one of the features is this tea should be picked as tender and earlier. The best Jingsha tea is picked before grain rain. The picking standard is the earlier stretching of one bud leaf and two bud leaf. Usually one kg top one, Jingshan tea, is based on 62,000 buds. Let that sink in for a bit. Okay, great. So uh, the first couple sentences I think were pretty good for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a famous historic tea. Mm -hmm. The picking time is early. Not all that surprising for uh, green tea, but I guess this one's really early. And they mention green rain, which I always like to tell, to share, like gu yu, gu yu is the, uh, gu yu. right, she's better at the tones. But anyway, if you just say gu yu, you're fine, g u y u, that's what green rain is. I, I think those translated are a little bit, it's lost. I don't know, holidays probably like that shouldn't be translated, I think. Mm. Um, that's just my opinion though. So I like to share that with you, that if you hear gu yu, that's that time frame, I think. Late April. Late April, right? Like yeah. uh, the 20th. 20th ish. Around 20th. It's lunar, right? Solely lunar, so it always jiggles yeah. a little bit on the calendar. Just one, two days jiggle usually. So the ending, though, the, where the, we start to talk about the picking standard, mm -hmm. this, this kind of goes off the rails, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all I got from it was it must be really small material, basically because of the last sentence, which says 1 kg is 62,000 putts. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know almost anything else. It's just, it looks like one bud with one or two leaf, I think. And, and it's really small material, I guess because it's early, but it's foggy. This is a foggy section for me. Yes. Uh, so the, um, uh, let's start from the beginning. I think that, like you said, the majority of this paragraph is very understanding. Just the first sentence I want to talk about, uh, cause it, again, translation, the tea name, as a Jingshan tea is also called a uh, Jingshan fragrance tea. So it's uh, translating the name Jingshan Xiangming. Xiang means fragrant mm. aroma or mm. stuff like that. Ming is another way to call tea in Chinese. But that's like other name. In the finished uh, translation on our website, I keep the Chinese pinyin, which is a Jingshan Xiangming. Mm. Uh, nice. Just want to point that out. And uh, I think the last uh, two paragraphs from the picking standard is earlier stretching. The right. stretching <laughs> is uh, similar to last uh, weeks we talk about uh, the stretching in this book. Uh, they use that just to say the, the, sec the leaves just start to open because that's the teacher. Oh, right. So right. she, I guess she, 
it's hard to for a non T person to understand in Chinese、mm. what that means. So she chose the word、right. stretching. But what it means is just the leaves barely open from the butt, unrolled a little bit. Right. So one but two leaf, one but one leaf. That's the plucking standard.、Mm-hmm. And here is in the quote you see top one. That's a direct translation of Chinese. But、mm. what this means again, T turn, is when China.、Uh, you know, there's a. A, a, a time in China that's pretty like pretty strict communist、uh, time, which means the government are very heavily regulates everything. So、mm-hmm. when they produce, so you don't have individual companies producing a tea and give it my name, say Zhen Tea, it doesn't exist, right? Right, it's all state. So、right? all state, but for state to fully.、Um, Uh, have a system. They got a grade in the tea for different、mm-hmm. price. So that's why you will say、um, how we name the tea on Gen Tea website has a little residue of that flavor because I think it's very easy for、mm. people to understand what's a top. So top one means top grade, first grade, the best grade. Then you have regular one. Then you have premium one, like a easy grading. At、yes. that time in the system in the Uh, state system, there's very strict uh, uh, rules about、uh, what's the standard of the leaves that can be called as top grade, or stuff、mm-hmm, like that.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but now it's、uh, you cannot even when you say when you see some people mark、yeah. that top grade, you cannot、uh, refer to the old system because、right. now it's a free market and people can.、Um, my top grade might be different than somebody else's yeah, top yeah. grade or stuff. TLDR way more. Bull crap nowadays. I almost said the S word. Whew, close one. <laughs> But old times. I, anyway, I'm gonna unpack this a little bit. Lots of great information there. Right. So,、uh, in terms of the bud, is talking about old times. That top grade Jinshan Cha uses sixty two thousand buds. And when we go on site, for example, we were talking about Mr. Ding. When we go on site and work with these super skilled producers and make a supreme tea. We're using those kind of standards, right? When we、uh, when we do that, so there is tons、With、of the, good stuff. I think that could be even some kind of of a generation talk. Like uh, uh, many people I, are like uh, are in tea industry earlier. Mm, mm. They oh, this is their communication, and this is the term everybody understands.、Mm. So that's how they talk. Like、uh, how, especially my mom, those are terms I I have to learn. And it has a pretty、too. strict meaning when they say yes, it. They don't、yes. mean that it's just oh I want to sell that to you, so it's a fancy word. No, they mean、That's、that、right. as the top grade. Yeah, it's very strict. And、uh, but if、uh, there are people who just get into tea, or even being tea merchant, or being in the tea, they they were not in that system, were not familiar、mm. with the system. They might not know what standard is. Like、uh, old times,、right. like a、uh, poor Sam, they also have old grades. And、uh, recipes using what ratio of mixing everything is very standard, but、mm-hmm. uh, kind of a as the 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 good side is easy to understand. There is no mismatch. Yeah, and it's easy to know what you're getting. If this term is there, that's、mm-hmm. what you're getting. If it's not, you're not.、Mm-hmm. And yeah. So any, I wanted to point out a couple of things. I didn't want to. Interrupt you, so I took、right. little notes. So in reverse order, the last thing you were talking about when you talk about state tea and when the、mm-hmm. communist government was a bit more strict, I just wanted to let folks know, without getting too political, that as Jen mentioned, right?、Mm-hmm. Um, I just think in the West there's a lot of、um, a lot of、um, negative press or negative propaganda or whatever about、uh, communist states in general,、uh, including China. And I don't. Again, I don't want to get political and say that it's a good thing or it's a bad thing or whatever. I just wanted to emphasize that it had its advantages in the context of tea, right? You had this grading system that was almost mechanically applied. This doesn't pass. Go over here. This passes. Go here. Top grade goes here. Very methodical. So it、mm-hmm. did have its advantages. So I know personally, I had some mental block looking at the good side of communist China. But I've managed to kind of open my mind. Anyway, that's all I want to say about that. <laughs> I also wanted to talk about a little bit. You mentioned that you put the pinion of the tea name,、uh, the way up at the top, the top highlight, the Jinshan Fragrance Tea.、Right. Just a quick one to let people know. What, that's a big part of the reason why all our tea names we keep the pinion. We don't translate to、uh, Dragon Well or to Iron Goddess of Mercy or those things because there's. 
in many cases, if not all cases, there's a, there's a decent amount of information in that name. Kind of even relating to how the state had and that. because Chinese mm -hmm. is a one word, a one character can have a multiple meanings. So people oh, can pick different, like right. the rhyme, exactly. right? The T rhyme, which mm -hmm. is talking about is not talking about rhyme, like a poem or song. It's actually a wrong translation of mm -hmm. the word yun, and it happens a yep. lot. Yeah, that happens a lot. And the other thing I wanted to point out is we also don't do that, nobody does that with Japanese green tea. So we really think that it's nicer to get the proper proper names or the original names, maybe original is a better word, the original names out there in, in the mainstream. Mm. I think it's the, uh, I think the Japanese tea went the right way and I think okay. it's a good way for us to go to as Chinese tea folk. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of the Japanese tea, this tea, Jinshan Cha, might not be very famous to most of us, I would say. Um, I, but the, why this tea made it to, to the short list of green tea? Honestly, in China, there are thousands of different uh, green teas, literally, with name. Just those ones with name. It's, un it. it's almost unbelievable. Yes. Let it, just I want to let it sink in for folks. <laughs> literally, there are thousands. Yeah. Just like we have Jingshan tea, Jingshan cha, there's 999 more and more. Mm. Go ahead, sorry. No, it's perfect. It's just staggering when you think about it. Yeah. This, uh, this tea why is uh, kind of uh, uh, important and it's uh, his, here it's just a really simplified as a famous historical tea mm -hmm. because this tea is um, not as famous in China but has significance in Japanese tea. Mm -hmm. This is when the Japanese tea, uh, the monk brought the first tea seeds back to Japan and again later mm -hmm. on, Cha Dao, Japanese uh, uh, Cha Dao, yeah, mm. comes from Jinshan Tea Banquet. It's a very really? historical thing. This and for uh, tea uh, Japanese tea people, this is the origin of uh, uh, their, whole, their tea whole tea thing. So they, you year after year, you have lots of Japanese people go to the temp, uh, go to the temple, go to the place to. Uh, not worship, but to pay In Jinshan, respect. Actually? Jinshan, yes. I know. Oh, that's that's a, so cool. Those are tea people for them, it means a lot because wow. this is the beginning. This uh, Jinshan. Of their tea culture. Mm. Oh, that Jinshan is, is a little mountain, and there is a temple, and those mm -hmm. monks practice tea and use uh, plant tea, make tea, and have a Jinshan tea banquet is a very. Uh, in the Tang and Song Dynasty, wow. which is around 1200 years ago, uh, or 1200, yeah, 1200, wow. uh, 1000 years ago was a major thing. And many, uh, many big uh, celebrities at that time also go there to, uh, you know, to practice uh, Buddha, Buddhist, uh, you know, meditate or stuff right, like right. that. Like, uh, it was once upon a time in history, this place this tea has a significance in Chinese tea scene as well as Japanese tea scene. That is super cool and they still go there to this day like is there yeah, a little like a, they, you, kind of thing? It's more like a, to go there to right. uh, feel they don't have to go like every year just no, no, but they you might, have many they people go. they I'm wanted to go might, there to see it. We might plan a trip around right. probably around Gu Yu is probably when they... That's a, that was actually the next year's trip plan. Oh, including really? that and we have plan for yellow tea. I don't know. The, Fingers crossed guys. I just uh, hear news yesterday about uh, going back to China. Mm. They're adding a blood test which has to be within 48 hours negative. But in Canada, it's, it's a four day, turnaround, a four -day time. turnaround. Then it was like, nowadays it seems really tricky yeah. to go back. We'll so. see. We'll see. We'll stay optimistic for now. I'm going to head back to the book and we're going to hit the next tea guys. Uh, one of my faves. Do you want to uh, check on the oh, yeah, comments sorry first? I, I absolutely wanted to check, but I forgot. <laughs> it's just a... <laughs> Keeping me honest. Good job. I'm trying to organize my space a little bit right. here without making an earthquake. All right. So, whoa. So, where are matter? we there? So, Cindy says, I'm drinking Master's Green from Guizhou. Is that similar to what you're drinking? I tried to find a list of what mm. you plan to drink, but I can't locate it can you advise me i can we have the the tea all the teas we're drinking are on our youtube channel so mm -hmm. if you link somewhere out there you can find all the upcoming lives um i think we put a link to it in our description or somewhere we put it oh in the bottom of our newsletter that will take you to i believe either the 
upcoming or the coming. Anyway, all the t- <laughs> I don't know. Okay, it's very complicated. All the titles have the T. Re- yes, all, all the, the titles have, have the T. But we are coming up with another list of our Dark life. Tea to make that easier yeah. so be sure to subscribe to our newsletter i'm organizing mm. all the uh, live sessions mm-hmm. that we have scheduled right. and there are new series coming out yes yes uh, so we'll have the sunday tea book it'll have our monthly little talk and the new one which is secret right now all right uh-huh. so we'll, we'll make that easy for you cindy Cool. And uh, Jan says, I agree. Nutty version of Dragon Ball is the best green tea. Yes. And it is the nutty version that I get so obsessed about. And I find even in a travel mug, this may be sacrilegious to some of you, but I throw that in a travel mug, you know, the not the super top grade one, but when I'm going out and oh my gosh, it is so mouthfeel. Well, you do that with pretty good one too. Like just a long day, he's obsessed with the Throw in laundry in travel mug. It's not just a glass mug. Okay, travel mug. Yeah, with the with the lid, which again is sacrilegious, I know. But I uh, I'll give you my recipe then, since I'm exposed. <laughs> I'm exposed. All right. Here's the recipe if you want to try it. Whatever your normal leaf amount is for a for a tumbler, minus a little bit. Okay, shave some off because it's going to be trapped in there with all that heat. So shave a bit of leaf off. Mm-hmm. Throw that in your travel mug. Go out. Don't be too excited. Let it sit. And watch what happens. If you've got, uh, if you want to get the result I get, use our lomjin because I don't know what other people's lomjin will yield. But if you use our lomjin, you will be pleasantly surprised. It pulls a lot of sweetness. Come a lot out. of sweetness. It's got it's got a lot of. I call it like a matcha matcha y shortbready nutty, mm. mind blowing delightful. Okay, guys. So uh, <laughs> on. I haven't tried all the green tea mentioned, but do you enjoy? But do enjoy Dragon Ball. I tasted one wonderful Taiping Ho Kuei mm. it's in a tea class, but when I, but I now own one that's not impressive. I remember. I think you had that last week, if I recall. It. Jan says, "Ha! I just, I have just wanted, wanted to, pause to pause you because, because I'm not. Uh, oh, something can, funny. <laughs> so you can't pause the live, I guess. Hmm, that's weird. You skip some. Do you? No, I you can know. continue. It's just a little bit. Slow. I don't even know if you can. So um, <laughs> we, he tried to pause us, though. I don't know how to feel about that. Surf, <laughs> Surf Tiger White, hey, welcome to the uh, welcome to the live. You translate the book now, but will mm. you release your version as a physical copy? That's a great question, and the answer, quite simply, is we don't know. <laughs> S- no, stay tuned. Yes. I, I think about yes. that a lot because when mm. I look at all the blog posts and our growing translation, I'm like, oh, this is pretty impressive. But uh, so stay tuned. It's not something I can answer at a live because I really don't know. It's more complicated than I want to do it. Right. It's a it's a book. Right. So stay tuned, though. I, the idea has crossed our mind. Mm-hmm. Cindy, go, Phil. I like your political bet. Nah, I'm going to keep it. Keep it subdued. OK, <laughs> there's enough of that on social media and on YouTube already. I don't want to add to that nonsense. Mm-hmm. I want to keep it all about the tea. Thanks mm-hmm. for speaking the truth. Mm. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, keeping the original names is so helpful as sometimes I have t- learned after the fact that I'm drinking a different shop's version of something I've had before but didn't realize what it was. You know, I never thought of it quite that way. And personally, I'm sure you f- thought of that. But yeah, it also helps you make sure if you want to make sure you're trying something new that you're not trying another Taeguan Yin under a strange new translated name or something. And JS, hey, welcome to the show, JS. This is all so interesting. Glad I was able to... Tune in today, drinking some sticky rice tea today. Oh, that sounds so Ooh. fun. Does that have a bit of sweetness to it or is it, is it a roasted Can rice? I'm so curious. Sticky rice tea. Mm, sounds fun, right? Yeah, what is that? Tell us more. Mm. If I was allowed to give that a cute name, I would call it mochi ball tea. Mochi ball tea. Right? <laughs> Cindy, thanks for the information how to find what you're drinking. I really tried to find it. No, yeah, right. no problem. And thanks for trying. I appreciate mm. it. Sorry we made it so hard. And then my subsequent description. So confusing. <laughs> she sorted me out pretty quick. I got a tea leaf in between my teeth. Give me a second. There we go. You can eat them, guys. You can eat them. They're really nutritious yeah. and good. I support the use of the travel mug. I use one of those all day long when I was teaching kindergarten and still do on occasion. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Mm. There's we nothing, doing that. nothing wrong with it, right? <laughs> we almost go everywhere with our travel mug, even grocery shopping. Oh yeah, shopping. when we go grocery shopping, we pack tea. Old times we brought it in with us. Now we have a sip mm. before we go in. We do our shopping with masks, no sipping in the store. Come back, have a few more sips, head to the next store. All right, guys, on to another. I just want to throw oh. in one thing. Good 
This tea is really sweet. I do like there's no astringency. Mm. There's no. This is the amount of tea leaf I put, mm. and I put that much of water. And I have and I drink more. down a little bit, and I refill more water. Mm. Uh, I use the uh, Zoji the boiler here. Set yep. at two hundred eight because I cannot set at two twelve. I guess it's just keep boiling, not good. Mm -hmm. So two hundred eight, pretty hot water. Yeah, that's just around no bitterness, no astringency. Those are from the. Uh, if you check our either product page or we even have blog posts blog post showing you tea, yeah. about where this tea is from. Those are from old bushes. Fun and fact. And those are uh, what? No, you go ahead. And uh, those are those net. Uh, how should I say? Self seeding mm. gardens. Nobody manages that. Wild. We call wild. them wild in the in the tea write up, I think. But mm. feral is a really good name. It's an old yes. garden, like centuries old and the, the bushes don't necessarily live the that location long. was uh, originally the uh mm. royal tea garden from Tang dynasty yeah. where the lu yu oh, sorry wrote the book and stuff yeah. mm. so they've just gone wild they self-seed they grow and it's a bit of a walk it's not an easy pluck it's a lot of right. work for those guys to make so we ask for it specifically you don't ask they don't do anything they yeah, they let it go yeah. um, which makes for great material which is probably why we're commenting on it right now mm. what's the fun fact Fun fact, that location is Jian Li Wu's favorite <sighs> lo tea location in the world. Like that is, her, yes. that is her top spot. I yes. just thought I'd share that. So now you yes. guys are she, after along she with me went and her to, and Jian Li. You're the only ones who know. Yes. Shh, after she see. went to so many like uh, tea yeah. regions and stuff. That's a good point. And yes, yeah, so it's not the only tea region she No, went, she's literally right? been she's... everywhere. Like not everywhere, but everywhere. Like yes. it's... But I, I really agree. Like the more you see tea regions, there's only maybe top two. One is the Shui Xian tea bush that uh, oh. that tea like uh, almost Where I canopy. was with you, the Bayan. Yes. So, the like Bayan those. Mm. And this one is uh, similar, very similar. Those are the top two places and uh, my mom was the I I mean I agree with her like those are the primary location and just impressive yeah super impressive yeah. all right fun facts aside time for some Angie white tea all right diving right in comparing with other green tea Angie white tea has a distinctive feature of high amino acid content mm -hmm. and plump in nutrients <laughs> Therefore, Angie White Tea is not only in good taste, but also beneficial to our health. Recently, Angie White Tea has been popular among the ladies mm -hmm. and also won the fame of beauty tea. All right. So, high amino acid and nutrients versus other green tea is obviously the first section. I think is crystal clear. I, um, I, did, I knew it was high in amino acid. I didn't know it was also higher in nutrients. So that's kind of nice. I think that's pretty clear. I don't think that's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I had to laugh about popular among the ladies. I feel like this tea is kind of like Drake, the rapper, but I don't know. <laughs> like it's just a funny way to put it. But, and then I don't know what they mean by, is there, it looks like it won a contest for the most beautiful leaf. Because I know that no, it's appearance... beautifying. Like uh, how we like ladies love cosmetic skincare. This is also a oh, that oh so it's related beauty. to the popular among the ladies. Yes. Oh, okay. So I misunderstood that. I thought yeah. it was a like it won some contest, which I thought was a little weird to put in a book. Mm -hmm. But I see it's a so this is basically what it's saying is it's a it, probably because it's good for health. It's popular among the ladies, and they it, it's considered to maybe make you look more beautiful. So maybe slimming help mm, your skin mm. glow whatever i don't know what the what the deal is okay um so that was that was it for that tea this is a tea that i really like as well i didn't mention it in the beginning but because i kind of mentioned all of them <laughs> anyway so my favorite is still top is long cheek yeah i think this paragraph is quite understandable for you mm. like uh, there's nothing tricky just uh, want to add something talking about amino acid it's uh, what does this displayed in mouthfeel and the mm. flavor, right? In Chinese, we call that xian. The higher uh, amino acid, the xian, the more xian it tastes like. Mm -hmm. That's why green tea, we want it to be like early pluck, early ones have more re higher, like a buds also have higher amino acid. Yeah. That's then it's, umami in Japanese, right? That's umami in Japanese. So you guys might know that term because yes. again, somehow those terms are more 
known, yeah. but the uh, Chinese is Xian. Yeah, X-I-N. if you don't uh, quite understand exactly what it takes, like uh, think about chicken broth, not mm. the ones you bought from those uh, kid, uh, paper tin from stores. Mm. No, the home, the real chicken broth with water real, and real chicken. Real bone broth. That's. Mm. And second is. GMS, GMS, MSG, MSG, not, not the uh, and also not the chicken flavor, not the chicken flavor, the mouth feel, the, the mouth feel and just something intangible is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, MSG is another one because that's the ultimate like a super concentration of that thing. Right. Right. It's invented in uh, Japanese in Japan and that's right. Uh, it's the ultimate uh, manifesto of mm-hmm. umami. Unlike which MSG, is, which might give you a headache. Angie by Chow is, unlike, is unlikely to give you a headache. Because of the. It's level. natural, right? The level it's is a, more natural than yeah, it's got It's all like those the other salt compounds. level in uh, food by itself. We all have salt from right, food. Right. But uh, when we put salt in food, the mm. cooking ingredients is different. Yeah. Or if you look at, like, I use a metaphor like caffeine, right? In coffee. Mm. I don't know if you have like nine coffees, you probably start to shake and get all jittery and you're really awake, but you're uncomfy awake. Mm. If you have nine cups of tea, the caffeine in tea is not only less, but it's with other things in its natural state, kind of more right. calming. So anyway, just a metaphor. Okay, mm-hmm. comments? I saw a few fly in, so let's head over there. Are you going to do this? Oh, oh, hang on. Hang on. I missed a spot. Just wondering. Yeah, sure. I'll do it. I'll do it live. Oh, I cannot miss everybody. Your, your do- favorite Dr. T Q and A. We cannot miss it, guys. We got to do it. <laughs> So um, I totally forgot to uh, take notes on this. So this is going to be live. Mm-hmm. Why Angie white tea is green tea, but white tea? Oh yeah, we have to do this. This is the quintessential question of Angie Bai Cha, which means Bai Cha, white tea. Hearing the name, many people will feel the tea should be attributed to the white tea class. In fact, the white tea and Angie white tea is different from the traditional white tea in our six main classifications. It is a rare and unique Angie County tea varieties. It's tender bud, produced by the processing production of green tea. Okay, so this is a bit tricky. I don't, Mm -hmm. um, just unpacking this and figuring out what it means. So first is basically the intro. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's the question. If this Mm -hmm. is this white tea, it Mm -hmm. says right in the title, Angie Bai Cha, Angie White Tea, Mm -hmm. that it's white tea. So how come this is a quote unquote green tea? That's the first little bit. And I think that's clear enough. But um, I don't think the second part, I kind of know the answer. So I'm trying to be honest, but Mm -hmm. it is rare and unique Angie County. I don't think I like basically it's processed as a green tea. Yeah, I think it's better if there are separate uh, sentence because that's Mm. two uh, meaning. One is talking about where it's from. One is talking about why is that green tea in one sentence. Yes. So uh, let's just uh, get this straight, uh, uh, like kind of a detached from the book content. Sure. Uh, I mean, book word by word. Mm-hmm. But so why is Anji Bai Cha white tea a green tea? Is because uh, in terms of uh, tea types or tea categories, is based on process, which this tea plant is processed in green tea process. Mm-hmm. So it's a green tea. So why is there white tea in the tea name is because this is a naming this cultivar. This cultivar is called Anji Bai Cha. Mm. Right? So the tea name is not talking about tea category or tea type. There are two things. And uh, by white right. tea, it means this cultivar, which is the name of the cultivar. This cultivar looks pale in early spring. The leaves right. looks pale. Um, even though this book's image is a perfect example of it, but you might be able to see a little paleness here. Oh. The brood one, the brood one shows better. A little paleness in the leaf while veins seems to be darker. So that's Anji right. Cha. Uh, and uh, so it comes from Anji County in uh, Zhejiang province. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a rare tea cultivar. So we had rare, like, rare, old okay. times rare. Okay, here is a difference because okay. China has Good. a long history. A lot of times when we talk traditionally or uh, it has a history or something, it's kind of a vague. 
right? So this tea has an interesting thing. Is before the eighties, nobody have ever seen this guy before. We only know there's、mm. this white tea cultivar or、uh, varietal that's somewhere because it's recorded in ancient tea books. But nobody have ever seen it.、Hmm. Then in the eighties,、uh, the、um, the local、uh, tea science institute. How do I translate that? But、uh, you know the local、uh, tea institute who is in charge of uh, uh, you know doing grafting. Yeah, make sure I think we should not talk、better. about that just for a second because it's、right. such a、um, sort of like any I guess any Western culture that has a. An industry,、uh, an agricultural industry, they will have generally、um, some. Oh yeah. Right though, like we like here in we Ottawa, have we have the experimental, experimental farm, farm, which is the government of Canada, where they experiment they on corn, wheat and corn. They do corn, wheat and right. So and pea, those major crops, yeah, right? Yeah. So they're trying、America. to help out farmers. So the, these tea、mm. institutes in China、That's、exist all、do. over the place, and they're sort of the analog to that.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so、they、just want to explain that because that's a yes, bit、yes. uh, strange, I think. That's right. So they found out this one little white tea cultivar and realized, hey, they matches the ancient textbooks that we read, not textbooks, sorry, just ancient books that ancient have texts. Texts that has a really simple texts. Yeah, yeah, T-E. okay. Yeah, yeah. X T. Yep,、right. just like an、okay. SMS message, but different. <laughs> right. So <laughs> have really simple record of this tea. We seem to find it. So they did something to see if we can duplicate this tea plant and if we can make that a, a, like a economically a sustainable kind of thing. And、right. eventually, we see what's propagating today. And wow, <laughs> I'm learning a ton today. This is super exciting. Yeah. It's just we. The, I heard a couple、Never. stories we hadn't come across yet. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Or okay. if we did, it was a long time ago, and I.、Forgot. Yeah. So、awesome. the another interesting thing is、uh, what we're drinking today. So we're thinking, are they the identical or really right. similar to the、question. old ta- to the te- ancient texts ones? We don't know, of course, but it already already quite different than the early phases in the nineties when they just.、Uh, Kind of a public that my mom was、uh, one of the first batches that they did some tastings and stuff、oh, wow. with, and、uh, so this story comes from my mom because my mom is like, oh nowadays the Anjiu、uh, Bai Cha looks and tastes nothing like when they first came out that early、uh, mm. cultivars, those early bushes. So they are the leaves are so pretty. They seem to have、uh, they were bigger and the leaves has this natural curl, and that one. The early ones, the amino acid uh, uh, content is way higher than now.、Mm. So when she first、uh, drank that,、uh, like in that tasting, she was saying it was mind blowing. Never seen a tea like that. Never、wow. tasted tea like that. Almost just like a drink chicken broth、right. without the chicken flavor.、Right. So it's really like、uh, and mouthfeel is so thick or like it's just so different. <sighs> Like I often, whenever、it's、we talk about, it's discouraging to hear about that. It's the, sorry, I don't want to discourage anybody, but it's just a fun thing because no, it's super fun. A lot of people first don't know it. We even heard story about how a local brothers found out this cultivar and doing doing something something, you know. Processing tea though. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, the origin, they they claim that they found this tea. Right. It's.、Uh, Really interesting, but、um, things are a lot out there. But just、uh, just every time we talk about Anji Bai Cha with my mom, and she always always tell me this. Right, I feel like maybe it's because I don't know. I'm speculating. And those are moments you regret you didn't like Do, born early or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like Michael Jackson's、uh, concert. Or is she, like back then, probably she didn't have a cell phone, right? And just even to have some pictures of that, but、uh, yeah. I wonder if it was harder to sustain, so it pushed to the modern version because it's more、uh, prolific, more yield, etc. It's a bit bit sad to think about, but you know well, that's life. Working on the farm aspects of a plant, so they are pushing different things. Of course, going, of course,、right? and I don't begrudge them that. I just kind of nostalgic about them. Yes, it's always ones,、right? it's kind of fun to hear that.、Mm. All right, so、um, picking up the comments here again before we head over to the next tea. Uh, how to find、uh, JS? It's very aromatic. Personally, I love the malt feel. It kind of tastes like drinking. Oh, this is the、uh, rice, the sticky rice, rice one.、Uh. It kind of tastes like drinking rice steeped in tea. 
The non-translated uh, name I found associated with the tea is Nyo Mi Xiang Cha. Nyo Mi Xiang Cha. Don't know. Oh, what's the base? It's a sanded tea. Sometimes we have Nyo Mi Xiang. Is that just a pure? So I heard that in Puar or in mostly Puar. In the 90s, we used to sell a lot of sanded Shu Puar. Oh, and cool. Like a Nuo Mi Xiang or rose flavor. Or Just like a, a scented puar, though, not with rice in this case. Mm, I don't okay. remember rice in it. I remember there's rose in it, okay. there's jasmine in it. There's... Very cool. Yeah, nowadays nobody even. I wonder if it's like Gen in Meisha. Those there's a Japanese. Is it Japanese? Gen Meisha? Mm. The one with the toasty rice in it? Right, but those are loose leaf. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah and brown and roasted, right? Yeah, I don't know mm. if that's if they're having a loose leaf or a. I mean, any, they didn't mention, and it's sticky rice. That's the thing that points no, pops no. out for me. And uh, I still do on occasion that. Jan says, "Well, these glasses are the coolest vessel for infusing drinking green tea I have ever seen. It looks really fancy. <laughs> it looks yeah, really thanks. Fancy. Okay, we got it. This is a recent acquisition." We, we, we just got these, and by we, I mean Jen just got these. I think they're so pretty. They're like this. Yes, you have a brilliant eye for stuff that's pretty. If you don't believe me, check our website. Check out all the tea pictures done by her. They're gorgeous. They're just gorgeous, and we got these because they're gorgeous. I think they're like a and wine glass without the, the leg. Yeah, without the stem. A stem. But they right? really highlight the leaf, right? You mm. can see the leaf dance and Casey? open. Really pretty. The view is different. Mm. Anyway, so thanks for that, Jan. Mm. And Cindy says that's uh, that's a shu puar, right? JS. Oh, yes, mm. the one you talk about. I just had that in the little mini mm, puar shop form. Yeah, it yeah, smells yeah. really nice. Ah, oh, scented mm -hmm. puar, just like you were saying. Mm. Uh, I think I always thought it this... white tea was actually white tea. So confusing. Ah. Yeah. So hopefully we cleared that up for you. And that's not unique to you. That's a really common. We had Cheng Sing Bai Cha, and it was the most popular question we had. Is yes. this a white tea? And if not, why not? Mm. And it's totally legit. Right. Um, JS at Cindy, uh, you got that right. It's definitely a, a winter comfort tea for me. Mm. Shupuar for us is our every night going to sleep tea. We love it for that. <laughs> I can't, you might be tell I'm a little bit like excited. We're having green tea. That is related. I cannot have stuff like this late in the evening or I'm doomed for my night's sleep is ruined. So Shupuar works for me really well for that. Yeah. Very chilling. Angie Bai Cha, Angie White Tea, but it's strange to translate it. Yes, agree. Yes, yes. Agree. Totally agree on. All right, and now we will head over to what is in our cup. Guju Purple Bamboo Shoot. Again, translated name, Guju Zasun. All right, Guju Purple Bamboo Shoot is a famous tea in the history. It is the doyen of the top royal tea, has been called the first one of all the tea by tea saint Lu Yu in Tang Dynasty because of its purple bud and as curly as a bamboo shoot. So it got its name. The Phoenix chariots are back, are back at half drunk. Beauties quickly back and open the door. The peony laughs and the golden tin moves. It was said that Hu, Hujo purple bamboo shoot had been here. The tribute description about Guju Purple Bamboo Shoot was created by poet Zhang Wengui, Tang Dynasty. Alrighty. Poem alert. I don't know if you guys <laughs> caught that when they, when everything went crazy in the, uh, oh, I don't know what I did there. Let me get rid of that highlight. It was random, but that was definitely, let's go back to the top before we get all excited about the poetry. All right, so Guju Purple Bamboo Shoot is famous tea. It is the Dwoyan of top What's royalty. Dwoyan? I don't know. I think it means Dean. Like uh, the dean in a university, uh, I think. I don't know. So help me out, guys, if you know what they mean by this. Doyen of top royalty. But as a reader, as an English reader, I think it means this is one of the top tribute tees of all time, I think, because the next sentence says, has been called the first one of all tea by the tea saint Lu Yu in Tang Dynasty. And then I'll pause on that. So I think all that means is it is the first or the best tribute tea, like royalty. It's the first uh, tribute, royal tribute tea. Mm. And you mm. want one? A little bit, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm and running dry it's here. considered the best tea, like Lu Yu consider is the best tea. Right, right. Right. 
because he was he he uh, in our early sorry. It's okay. Just move that. Okay. Uh, in our early episode, we we uh, we talked about mm. the Louis standard of tea, right? A bamboo. If they look, the leaf look like a bamboo shoot, they're the good teas. Mm. I wanted if to talk purple, about that too. Okay. Actually, because right. I think bamboo shoot for a Westerner is. Uh, wide open right first you may not even know what we're talking about sometimes you buy them in the packages and they're sticks they're mm. just straight there's many there are many yeah. varieties of bamboo. yeah so so the ones that they're that he's talking about are the, the literal shoots so they these things pop out of the ground like a look at my hands on the screen like a triangle like a cone mm. and they're shaped like cone. a cone but the leaves are are conical triangles that, that are overlapped and overlapped and overlapped. Mm. So th I f what they mean is the way the bud opens is like a bamboo shoot curl opening mm. kind mm. of thing. Yes. I don't think that's really a metaphor that we can use, assume, whereas it's totally safe for, I think for Ch most Chinese, if you say it's curly like a bamboo shoot, they're like, oh, we all know that. We yeah. know that, yeah. So I wanted to explain that. Yeah, that's great. It's that's also great. related to your food culture. See, sometimes I take that for granted yes, because yes. I'm familiar. I never think I need to explain much, but yeah. that's really helpful. There's two layers to the bamboo shoot, right. I think. We already unpacked the layer one, which is just what is that and mm -hmm. why do they use that? Second is, I think it's indicative of Chinese food culture, which is a, an interesting thing to think about when you talk about tasting great tea. You use lots of food descriptors for shapes and uh, colors and this and that, and it tells a lot about your uh, the, the, the Chinese enjoyment of taste flavor and texture and I don't want to go too deep into that but it's a it's a double layer the bamboo shoot thing I think had two layers to it mm -hmm. got everything out of my notes good <laughs> nice then we hit this right the Phoenix chariots I won't go further okay the Phoenix chariot so I started when I read this I got down to about maybe like here, open the door kind of area. Right. And I realized. Uh, I, I just quickly noticed the Cindy's nose that she Googled a do, doyen, do, doen? Doyen. Doyen. The most respected or prominent uh, person in a particular field. Mm. Wow, that's actually very. Dean. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Cool. Uh, learn a new word. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, thank you. So anyway, we were in the poem, like that poem right, right. section was a little bit crazy, like good. <laughs> you can tell it's a poem because it starts to sound like a drunk talk. Yeah, I don't know if a, if a non tea, because if let's say you're just getting into tea from a Western perspective, you don't know. Can we know. do a bracket where there is the yeah. quote so you can see from Chinese? Yeah. So, so here is the poem here, starting there yeah. and ending here, I believe. Yes, so that's the poem. Uh, it's the full, the qu po full, full quote of the poem in here. So it's very, uh, and I skipped that in my di like translation because it's just impossible to. Yeah, it's a literary endeavor to translate this properly. Mm. It's not the goal of a tea book to make a perfect translation of a beautiful piece of right. art. But I think right? it's a kind of nice to talk mm. over it. The quote unquote importance of that is uh, this guy recorded the theme of uh, the royal tribute uh, tea of uh, Guzhu Zisun as a tribute tea. And uh, once, uh, once we, we're going to talk about this poem a little bit more, but this poem has a really cheerful, really happy, as if mm. something precious and lovely comes in, it's exciting, and in a way tells you how people love tea or how the royal court, the emperor loved tea at that moment to tell you the importance of the Gu Zhu as yeah. the royal tribute tea. Yeah, you're going to read it for us actually. I oh my. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to make her. I really want to hear it because I think no matter what language you understand, I think poetry has, <laughs> there's a beauty in poetry I'm not no very good what. at the reading. Do your best, do your best. <laughs> Put on your FM voice. I don't have FM. Just kidding. You just have that. Me. Uh, just before before we dive into the poem, I uh, just want to quickly say this guy, the poet, poet Zhang Wengui, he is not like a top poet, not to speak down on him, just, you know, all times people uh, who read uh, often Forget do... Forget it, don't read the poem. No, no, no. I'm just often, kidding. <laughs> they often do poems, so, uh, so it's not something very... He's not top-notch uh, poet, but... Um, 
He's a, he, he was the official local official in Huzhou area at that oh. time. He was the officer who was right, in charge right, right. of doing the royal tribute. That's why he has a chance to record it. Right, if somebody right. leaves in Beijing, he would not know much of that. Sure, sure. So that's reminds that's me of the... more important to I mean his title. I think more important to know him as a poet is to know that he was the officer at that time. He was there at the time. Yes, that's he was assigned key. by the mm-hmm. royal uh, by the emperor to be there and in charge of those. Mm-hmm. Right. So credibility established. Check. Uh, I'm not gonna read the whole poem. No, the whole I'm poem. gonna do the sentence by sentence. Okay. Sure. Otherwise, this is too much Chinese. Song. Okay. Okay. I th- let us know if you wanted to read the whole thing straight through. It's not that much. It looks like maybe 25, 30 characters tops. I One know. syllable per character, guys. It's really short. It's shorter than what I just said. <laughs> First, it, like here it says, all the translation there was literal. So you can look for those. So that's literally the The sentence. Phoenix chariots are back at half drunk. Yeah, after uh, they're missing two words, uh, after going out for uh, like a trail walk, like a springtime go out field okay. kind of thing. So what it means, the phone, yeah, the phoenix uh, chariot, chariot? Mm-hmm. that refers to emperor. We often, uh-huh. this whole, uh, whole poem, you will notice we use uh, things to refer to people. Right, so that means that the emperor come back in the spring after he had fun outside enjoying the view kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And second, talk about beauties quickly, back and open the door. Uh, yes, it means uh, the the beauties it means those servants, those uh, uh, concubines. No, mm-hmm. servant. <clears throat> okay. Like old times, the ladies all have their mate mates. Okay. Could Hand be like mates. mates. Okay. Yeah, so they get the water in, in and the stuff, and then you say the peony love and the golden tea moves. So this is just a, it's not peony love. It's those beautiful people. So those female, like woman oh, love. It's a it's metaphor. A metaphor. Like in English, all the sixties in English, they say, "Oh, look at the birds." Yeah, right? something like that. Yes, and also that uh, golden tea. That's not tea. It's a trans, It's an old stuff. Old times. Uh, the, the, if you watch old Chinese movies or TV series, we have re- a lot of hair and uh, there's decoration on the hair. That's the thing. Dian. It's the, the yeah. thing that goes in the hair oh, and the hair. Uh, also hand down. Right. So every right. you, when you move, they move. And right. So very pretty. But that means it just uh, describes a really cheerful scene that people are really mm. happy for mm. something to happen. So the first three sentences are telling you people are very happy for something. You don't know what it is. It's Last vibing. Sen- the situation is vibing. Yeah, it's the guy describing to you the scene. It's right. like a stage. Mm. Describe nice. the scene. Pleasant day, happiness all around, beauty. <coughs> mm-hmm. Sorry. And the last one is to say, oh, it's because of the Gu Zhu Zisun coming. The tribute uh-huh. arrived. So that's nice. 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 Okay. Good one. Let's check out the comments. I still think it would have been better if, oh. you, if you read the poem instead of tell us what it means. I don't think it, it's that uh, interesting. <laughs> no, the poem, the translation is a little bit interesting, but I think the, uh, I don't know, maybe it's because I like music. I really think I don't need to understand to hear the wonderful nature of it. All right. Okay. Comments time, folks. Comments time. I think I think, Andrew, I'm confusing. Uh, J.I. Cindy, you got that right. Winter Comfort. Angie Bai Cha. Yan says, Angie Bai Cha, Angie Bai Chi. Oh, that's where we were. Guju sounds so exciting. Okay, not. Guju sounds so exciting. Yes, it is really exciting. Really good. And uh, this one, yeah, if you can check the uh, link down in the description if you want to grab some, we have a link straight to it. And you can grab this exact tea and pop it in your cup. Mm, if you and want. you can cook with that. So this is a, like I have been chewing those leaves all the time. Oh, it's really not good. bitter. It's not, not bitter, not astringent. Really, really good. Tolerant. You don't have to know how to brew it. Mm-hmm. You just put water in. Done. Cindy says, I googled Dwayne. So we got that. We're all caught up on the comments. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to flash right back to the book. Last one. Mm. Are we on the last one already? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's. Okay, guys. This is the last of a. This green is the tea. last of the green tea section. It's a bittersweet moment for us here. Lao Zhu Da Fang. Lao Zhu Da Fang is produced by the monk Da Fang on Bamboo Mountain, south of Huizhou, so it is called. 
It has been more than 400 years. There are Lao Zhu Da Fang, Ding Gu Da Fang, Su Pei Da Fang, three kinds. Lao Zhu Da Fang is also called Bamboo Leaf Da Fang. It is flat and even, smooth, like the West Lake Dragon Well, but plump. All right. So it has been, so this is pretty straight. It's made by this guy, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Mount Da Fang on Bamboo Mountain, probably a uh, Jushan, right? I don't know. There's a lot of ways to say bamboo in Chinese, so I wasn't and sure. And a lot of ways to say mountains. Mm, this place is called Lao Zhu Ling. Lao Zhu Ling. Mm, old mm. bamboo Ling. Mm. Okay. Um, and uh, so those are pretty, just geographical pinpoint. Who is it made by and where, where is it made? It yes. has been more than 400 years. This is, I think, what we call a non sequitur. There's no, uh, the, the sen it's not a sentence or something's wrong with the sentence. But I think it just means that the oh. tea is f more than 400 years old. It's been being made for over 400 years. Yes, has a okay. history of Not memory. too hard to guess, but I just, it was a bit of a strange one. I wanted to double check, since I can. Hmm. And there are three kinds. I think that's pretty straight. One, two, three, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess we'll talk more about those in a minute. And it's kind of flat, and flat like Longjin, except uh, I guess a little bit not as flat because it's plump. Plump means kind of like a round tummy. Um, not yeah. sure if that's if that's no. captured properly. I feel like it's. I call oh in brackets I put it's a little fatty. <laughs> so uh, that's mm. what I got out of this from reading that. Sturdy. I think I used the word sturdy. I feel like you did. More in, if you're following along in the translation that's in the description down below, we have that on our website. Mm. We definitely. I remember you used the word sturdy because I was like, "Ooh, I wouldn't have picked that word." So I feel like plump was a bit misleading because if you if she had have said but sturdy, I would have just think it's a bit more um, resilient. I don't know. Longin is a little bit brittle. The look is slightly mm. sturdy. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? It just, I think it would just, like you can look at Longjin and you see, ooh, if I'm too rough with this tea, I'm going to break them all in half. And you're right, you're going to. You got you don't want to be too brutal with your Longjin or you're going right. to break all your little pieces and it's not as good that way. Mm. So sturdy, I would guess, guess that it's a little bit more um, tough looking, like just more, I don't know, resilient, less delicate. This is, uh, the, uh, so I think this part is pretty good in terms of the, give you a, like a rough idea of what this tea is. Mm -hmm. This tea comes from uh, Huizhou, okay, Shunan. Uh, what caught my attention, because the rest are pretty just the plan what's going on, is the location where it comes from. Just some interesting stories, because uh, Huizhou, okay. Shunan, Shexian. This uh, county, Shexian, has been, it has over 2,000 years of history. It first became the county when China changed the uh, system from old feudalism of, uh, you know, king, emperor, that uh, lord relationship mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. like, today's relationship, like, uh, uh, like, uh, county to, county and to stuff, and to... their, their head is a kind of a side or, uh, by the central government rather than by the local lord. You know, mm. the lord, it doesn't have the lord and the, the, the land relationship. So that happens around 220, 220 BC-ish, right? That's the time when Shexian become a county. So... Just because uh -huh. that, I don't know, I, I'm not sure how important this is for the tea, but just to... It's not very important. It's just okay, a cute okay, little keep going, thing. Keep going. But, uh, but a transfer from more of a feudal setup yeah. to a central government setup in 220 BC? Yes. Okay, that's a bit, I don't know for you guys, but that's a bit shocking for me as a, like, I, I'm not so strong on Chinese history, but that's a pretty early time to have such a sophisticated form of government, I think. Right, yeah. right, right. We changed the. That's an aside, the, not really relevant. <laughs> yes, just some fun thing. The, I, I, uh, I talk about this because I want to tell you a funny story about that area. So Shexian is uh, that area consists of uh, several local, say, district or stuff, right? And uh, one of them is Wuyuan. Last week we talked about uh, Wuyuan Minmei, right? They they also produce mm. tea, green tea, and they were they right now. 
Huizhou, they are Anhui province, and uh, Wuyan is Jiangxi province. But their relationship is uh, next door, almost like a Gatineau and Ottawa right. kind of thing. It almost like one city, but belongs to different province. But right. this happened before in early uh, 1900, that uh, when first time, because Wuyan has been long belonging to Shexian, which means the Anhui area. They, and their local people believe they're Anhui people. But in early 1900, because of some changes in stuff, uh, they got uh, somehow detached and go to Jiangxi province. And the local people are really not happy. They have protests, they have everything. We're back, we want to be back to the other province. We don't belong to this province. Whoa, they struck a nerve. Yeah, it's really, I need to change sense. it back. And stuff. It did. It takes decades. It takes decades. They get all the local people who have influence to send appeals to the government at that time and uh, lots of social activities. They try to make that happen. The reason I share that is kind of at first, it's kind of funny. It's like talking about a little, it's, how should I say? I don't know what would be a more proper, uh, appropriate location but it's just a little area that just so oh, insists i was on trying where to think of to. some some metaphors to help our, our friends in the united states or el elsewhere if you're uh, one of our european viewers maybe shoot if you know of something like this i think it happens at least the gatineau ottawa i think a lot of people don't understand so mm -hmm. we, we're two different cities okay. in two different provinces um gatineau is on the quebec side we're on the ontario side here in ottawa but they've kind of always been like that because we have only a couple hundred years of history. And it, I may be wrong, they may not have always been like that. So don't hold me to that. <laughs> but there's, I know there's other cities that are in, in, the, in the United States that are separate. Like the, there's, I think, Kansas City, which is not that small. I think people know about... Oh, they also have... There's Kansas split. City, Mo, Missouri, right, right, right. I think. And I think there's Kansas City, Kansas. Oh, right. I think. So it's okay. kind of like they said, oh, let's just make it all in Kansas since it's called Kansas City. But right. the Missouri people freak out. Right, right. Right. And I don't think anybody else in the rest of the United States would care at all. Well, the thing is like that. <laughs> I don't know. People... Sorry if you're from Kansas and I struck a nerve. I didn't mean to. I don't know if I'm... Yes, tell us. Correct us. If we say and if you, right. if you can think of anything like this, yes. let us know too. It's yes. Kind the of... reason is because it kind of almost uh, reminds me of my older study. Uh, one of the study I did on uh, talking about the nationalities oh. and... Your voice is different. Oh. I don't know. It looks like she's still on and plugged in. Is this any better? Okay, that because my hair. Thanks, Jan. Thank you. Let me know if it's uh, better and now I clear up a little bit. Oh, let me check the uh, also your volume. Okay, we've yeah. got it as fixed as we can get it on our side. Yeah. So this is not tea talk. It's just uh, feel like uh, it's kind of a fun to uh, remind me of my old study talking about nationalities and people's like a self identity recognition and stuff. That is. Uh, uh, a kind of a fun topics and it can happen in such a small landscape not to tend we today we tend to talk about nationality in terms of which passport you hold but i think in uh, right. especially in european in china in where people have long histories so they really have a strong sense of a belonging which is uh, I found sometimes, sometimes I find it's hard to communicate with the people in North America that they don't quite understand. And uh, sometimes when we talk about this tea regions, we feel like this tea comes from this region, which is uh, the recorded region. But even though under the same name, because of the long history, they could have been referred to different areas as well. So right. that kind of a long history thing, the effect on that, on people's mind, on people's understanding, I found a lot of times we take what we understand and just to think that's how it always be. Kind of thing. I'm just, hopefully this will be better. They lost oh, your oh. mic for some reason. I don't know what's okay, going on. Okay. Don't worry about it. Is this better? Is my mic working? And can you hear if I hold my mic over here? We're almost done, so I'm mm. not. I don't mind holding it. Well, my mic said, don't talk anything irrelevant. <laughs> Maybe. It's interesting, yes, though. Yes. I think I saw that uh, people are liking the historical background. And um, and uh, hopefully they can still hear me, I think. 
But Cindy mm -hmm. replied, so I think we're getting through a little bit. You're probably just weaker because you were going, and my mic was facing the other way. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's helping. Okay, cool. okay, okay. Thanks, Igor. Cool, thanks. So I guess that was summing up. That's my mic is strongly said, shut up when it's not relative. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a good time to just sum up. I think we've kind of covered the comments. And um, shit, we got to look into that. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that covers our uh, green tea section. A super uh, exciting. I don't know. That was like a dozen teas, I think. Maybe even like 16. It was a lot of teas. I'm going to go up here. I'll bring back the book for a second. And we'll mm -hmm. just, let's have a quick count together. <laughs> <laughs> I have sound effects with my motion here. So, right. right. Three, four, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. 11, 12, 12 13, 13. 13 or 14. Like mm. just a ton of green teas. Anyway, coming up next week, guys, stay tuned. We're going to be heading into dark tea territory. It's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of fun. So we've got our, our everybody's favorite, Puar, or maybe the most popular. Yes. And then a few others, which I think are really under... Uh, Less under known, advertised really. under known and uh if you check out our website we make a real effort to bring you guys really amazing dark teas also our puars are great shen and shu but our dark teas are also really neat and it's a great way to explore we actually specialize more into puar and oolong when uh in china but here we're not very known for puar somehow mm -hmm. yeah anyways should be because yeah, we have be. some amazing, amazing <laughs> aged puar. Next week, we're going to dive into more basics about dark tea before we can even work in right. uh, yes. specific tea types. So uh, That's right. that would be really good. And I know you guys, some of you guys would have really good questions about dark tea. Mm -hmm. You can either mm -hmm. shoot us a message on Instagram or something so we can prepare to be sure to cover your question or... Be sure to be there next week. Yeah, with Natasha us says and she's super excited for the dark tea section. Right, so, same yeah. here. Same here. And hey, I know it's a live. I just want to tell people it's. Mm. A, we know it's a live, and that can be hard for people. Not to worry because uh, it. You know, it's going to be up. You can always come back and watch it later. We love, Absolutely. love, love, love when you guys come out and mm -hmm. appreciate a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but don't panic. It's going to be all right. It'll it'll be up there for you. Mm. All right, so guys, next week, dark tea, this week, green tea. Stay tuned for the list coming up. We're going to publish all the live events that are coming up, Cindy, with the teas that will be accompanying them. I think we'll, all of them will have a tea. Mm -hmm. So you can, and we'll put the link to those. So stay tuned for that. And um, until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.